South Sudan's President Salva Kiir has sacked his vice president and rival, Riek Machar. Machar withdrew from Juba last week following the latest surge in violence between supporters of the two leaders. He was given until Saturday to return to the capital, but is still missing. General Taban Deng has now been appointed the new vice president. Well, more than 270 people were killed and thousands displaced earlier this month during fighting in the capital. And for more on this story, let's speak to... Uh, TRT World's Fidelis Sambar, who's joining me now live on set. So, Fidelis, just, uh, let's just go back a bit in the story. How did we get to this stage where we are now? Well, uh, a peace agreement was signed, you know, last year between uh, the, former the former vice president, in this case now, Rick Masha, and the president, Salva Kiir, to end the war because um, so, uh, Rick Masha was sacked in 2013 mm -hmm. as the vice president of South Sudan by the president. And his fighters took up arms against the South Sudanese army. So he went on exile, came back, and in April he was you know, sworn in again to take back his post. His supporters, some of his fighters, were given posts you know, in line with the agreement. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, uh, last week when the clashes, what actually sparked the crisis was his fighters came to Juba during a meeting with the, that's between the two leaders. Their fighters had uh, an altercation outside of the presidential palace and it led to serious fighting which resulted in the death of so many people and then by extension they you know they took that beyond the presidential palace mm -hmm. went as far as attacking civilians attacking un compounds and uh, you know after that um, because rick masha the vice president left after the fighting had more like died down a bit and since then, no one has seen him. He's been gone. So essentially, there was a power sharing agreement between the two men. Uh, but now Machar has gone after the violence. I mean, where is he? And is it, are we going to see more violence uh, as a result of the fact that he's not uh, where he should be? Well, it's not impossible that uh, we're going to see an outbreak of violence again, given the antecedents of uh, you know, both camps. Because um, uh, when he was removed, his fighters, you know, they regrouped and attacked government forces, which resulted in the displacement of over two million people and thousands were killed. Um, he, since um, Rick Machar left the presidential palace last week, he, he reportedly went back to his base. Mm -hmm. And you know, even though there are some reports that he must have uh, left the country, but uh, that is highly unlikely because he left with his fighters. And people actually, no one actually knows what next because uh, he's not said anything. No one has, uh, you know, he, no one has seen him. Just that some of his fighters have been seen, you know, in his strong base. And now people are like, uh, it's really cagey for people. People, na foreign nationals are leaving. Uh, most of those from the West have been uh, evacuated by their, uh, by their embassies. Uh, some have fled to neighboring Uganda, which is where you have many of the, uh, the you know, the local, most, most of the uh, small business people. Mm -hmm. Their governments have evacuated them to Uganda. And people, even, uh, uh, you know, nationals of South Sudan, are also leaving because they are fear, you know, they are afraid of their lives. Given that, uh, you know, if a fresh outbreak of fighting, you know, occurs now, there will be actually no safe place for them. Absolutely, a very worrying time. And so, Riyad Mashar has been replaced by a man called General Deng. He's the new vice president. Just explain who he is and, and why he's important in this story. Yeah, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, General Deng was the peace negotiator. He was actually the one who one of those who facilitated the recent uh, peace deal. He was the one who coordinated the, you know, the return of Rick Marshall to office. Now, last week, when, he, when Rick Marshall went into hiding, he, you know, he broke ranks with Rick Marshall because he was not happy mm -hmm. that Rick Marshall was going against the peace deal they had signed. So right now, there's like a division within the opposition because uh, General Deng has got his own uh, you know, fighters who were loyal to him. Because now, and now that he's been sworn in as the vice president, he's you know more like empowered to be able to break ranks, you know, and also split the loyalty of the fighters, you know, between Rick Masha and himself, and that's like a sort of a big plus to Salva Ki. But then, you know, the major concern now is, uh, you know, how do they maintain peace? The UN Security Council is meeting later on Tuesday to decide what next, because the UN. Uh, Peace, uh, uh, mission in South, in South Sudan has got about 13,000 fighters, but they are mostly there to just maintain peace. But now they'll be debating to see whether these roles will be defined, their role will be redefined to, you know, more like uh, to go become like a combative role as suggested by the UN Secretary General uh, Ban Ki-moon. And because Ban Ki-moon has also suggested that sanctions should be placed on the South Sudanese government and an embargo so that uh, 
to limit the you know the fighting you know, so that when they don't have enough arms they won't be able to fight themselves and uh, the African Union I just got back from Kigali the African Union did adopt you know uh, more like a report uh, urging uh, the you know African countries to contribute troops so that they can send additional forces to South Sudan to maintain peace but President Salva Kiir won't have that he you know he's seriously objecting the deployment of more troops to his country. So we continue to wait and see and wait for that UN uh, announcement later on today. Fidelis, as always, excellent. Thank you very much.